Today we're going to learn about how to convert units in chemistry. The conversion of units is one of the most basic skills that any student will learn and it is taught very on early on in a chemistry course. Often when we are converting units, we'll have various conversions rattling around in our heads and it can get very disorganized. That's why when we are to convert units, we need a systematic and organized approach that will ensure that we're going to be able to organize our work and get the correct answer. The method that we're going to be using is the factor label method. The factor label method is a very simple principle that is based on removing units that are unnecessary and that are unwanted and canceling them out in order to leave the units that we want. So for example, we start with our desired units or our original units. And as you can see, we have our conversion. We have our ratio between our original units and our, our desired units. What ends up happening is that since the original units are diagonal from each other, which is ultimately what we want to do when we cancel them out, they're going to cancel out, leaving us with our desired units, which is what we want. So let's apply this to an example now. Convert 55 meters to miles. So to begin, our starting units are meters. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. There is 2.54 centimeters in one inch. There are 12 inches in one foot. And there are 5,280 feet in one mile. Now, once we have our conversions, we see the units cancel out. Meters and meters cancel out. Centimeters and centimeters cancel out. Inches and inches cancel out. Feet and feet do as well, leaving us with miles. From here, we perform the indicated mathematical operations. So in this case, we would multiply 55 by 100, then divide it by 2.54, 12, and 5,280, leaving us with our final answer of 0 0.034 miles. Now, another situation where you'll have to use the factor label method to convert is not only with just normal single units such as meters or even you know units of time or whatnot, but also with rates such as miles per hour, kilometers per second, and so on. Um, so we're going to go into that right now. It's not too difficult. It's basically based on the same principle as what we have done before. So as an example, convert 50 miles per hour to meters per second. So we're starting with the rate miles per hour. Now, the only difference between this and the factor label method as we applied it before is that we're dealing with two different units, miles and hours, so a unit of distance and a unit of time. So what we need to do is we need to tackle these separately. So we're going to start with the distance. One mile is equal to 1.6 kilometers. As you can see, the miles are diagonal from each other because we want them to cancel out. One kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters giving us meters is what we want as our ideal uh, and our ending unit. So what will ultimately happen is the distances of miles and kilometers will cancel out, leaving us with meters. So now we have to focus on our time. We start with hours, and we know that in one hour there are 3,600 seconds. Now, keep in mind, even though that um, hours are not on the bottom, that's fine because what ultimately happens is since hours are diagonal from each other in the uh, you know the scheme here, what will happen is they'll end up canceling out. So going back, we cancel out common units. So miles cancel out, kilometers canceling out, cancel out, leaving us with our distance of meters. Likewise with time, hours also cancel out, leaving with us with our time of seconds. So ultimately what we end up with is we end up with the following. We end up with end up doing 50 times 1.6 times 1,000 and divide, uh, dividing that by 3,600, giving us a final answer of 22.22 meters per second, which is the units that we want. So basically, to conclude and sum up here, the whole principle of the factor label method is setting up the uh, system so that what will end up happening is that units that you want to get rid of and you want to that are undesired, whether they be starting units or intermediate units, get canceled out. And we do that by having them placed diagonally from each other. And then ultimately we cancel out everything and we're left with only the desired units. So in this case it was meters and seconds. Should you have any other units left other than what you want, then you there's an error somewhere in your conversions. One final note, keep in mind this PowerPoint was not meant as a means to teach you conversion values. Those values can be found by consulting your chemistry teacher or by looking online.